I never thought that my last video about turning uh, the clock's face would have been that successful. Almost every comment asked for the build of the frame as well. As I mentioned in the other video, I had been on a little pressure as I had the d definite uh, deadline, says my mother's birthday, and a lot of techniques to go through, which mostly had been done uh, on my recently modified table saw. I'll definitely miss some footages, but uh, I'll try to explain the necessary steps I went through whenever they are essential for the build. For the design of the frame, I didn't make any plans. I just got a rough picture in my head and I had to make the dimensioning on the fly by going through the wood I've got in stock and uh, on the face I just made on the lathe. As I thought, it would be a great idea to make the, the clock out of something which had belonged to a member of our family, I choose the uh, dark red Maranti from the door frame my sister gave to me. And I just had to, well, rough cut the weird shape of the rails and styles into a square, more handable size. The first layout of the reclaimed wood made me feel comfortable with the picture inside my head. I started to cut the styles and the upper rail to their final dimensions square, just about 5 mm thicker than the face of the clock. For the bottom piece, I squared two of the raw blocks to the later glue joint. With some 80 grit sandpaper on a flat surface, I managed to flatten the glue faces. Now it's just a matter of adding some glue and some clamping pressure to get the well more heavy base of the final frame. The most simple connection between uh, the base and the styles is a dowel. As a rule of thumb, the dowel should be one third of the thinnest material for the maximum strength. So the biggest drill bit I own is a 15 mm one. As you don't get dowels this size, I took the styles over to my lathe and uh, turned the dowel to one end. Starting by scribing a line ar around the styles using my marking knife. Um, this line was uh, pretty deep, which prevented the styles from possible tear out produced by the now following turning. With my caliper set to 15 mm, I turned the dowels in between centers. The dowels had been longer as needed and I cut them to length uh, on the bandsaw.
at the table saw I cut the two recesses in front in the front and the back of the base. The, the remaining center is about six millimeters wider than the styles, which leaves a small shoulder. Uh, using my drill press, I drilled the two 15 mm holes for the styles. With the styles uh, dry fitted, it's time to figure out the exact height of the half lap joint for the rail. To get it more accurate than by measuring, I use a scrap piece of wood as a story stick, marking the exact distance between the styles, which became the height of the half lap joint. With the blade of my table saw set to half the thickness of the styles, a couple of passes took care of the cutout of the half lap joint. Over here I mark the position of the cutout on the rail. Again, another few passes over the blade made it easy. Before my modification to my table saw, I had not been able to do something like this. The zero clearance insert and the shortened riving knife made a huge improvement to my saw. As I drilled the holes into the rim of the clock's face without an indexing ring on the lathe, uh, I had to transfer these slide off positions of the holes to the dry fitted frame. Over at the drill press it's just a matter of seconds to drill the last four holes. Well this first dry fit works looks perfect and that's the way I hope to, to get this piece done. So now it's time just for doing the sanding and while well, filling the holes with the wood filler and then it's time for the assembly and the piece is finished. Lots of boring hours later filled up with sanding, filling holes and gaps, more sanding, applying sanding sealer and even more sanding. It's time for the assembly. With the four dowels glued to the frame, it's just a matter of adding some glue to the half lap joints, flipping a clock over and gluing the dowels of the styles into the base. Well, the dowels which hold the clock aren't, aren't glued into the clock's face itself to allow for expansion and contraction during the seasonal changes of humidity. With the glue dry, I apply two coats of wax. After buffing out the wax, I mount the three feet, the clock's mechanics and the hands. And now the clock is finished. Thank you for watching and if you like this one, please leave a comment.